Hey everybody, I'm Brian Rothschild. I'm the executive director, co-founder of the John Lennon Educational Tour Bus. This beautiful bus that's right here. The bus is dedicated to providing young people with free, hands-on opportunities to create original music, videos, short films, documentaries. And it has a crew of three that travels all over the United States, uh, going to schools, colleges, universities, shows like the NAMM show. Uh, NAM has been a partner for many, many, many years, obviously. With John Lennon's name on it, we have the support of Yoko Ono Lennon, who immediately loved this idea and has been a significant and principal partner on it, along with Apple and Dolby and Genelec and Audio-Technica and Roland and many, many, many others, um, including our latest partner, Battleborn Batteries, a division of Dragonfly Energy, um, the bus has, for the longest time, um, been struggling with old lead batteries and a uh, very, very awkward, gawky, last century um, workflow as it related to that. So I'm going to introduce you to Jeff Sobel, who is our creative technology officer, who designs the systems on the bus, um, who works with our manufacturers to create just the perfect combination of technology and the right solutions for students and for celebrities. For example, we just got off-road from traveling with Wu-Tang Clan, recorded Wu-Tang's music on board, and uh, a very special new project that RZA is going to be here on Saturday to talk about called A Ballet Through Mud. Um, it is an orchestral piece that he recorded with the Colorado Symphony Orchestra and then brought on board here where we did our first Dolby Atmos mixes. So we have a 714 Dolby Atmos set up in the front studio here, and that is probably the pretty, pretty big exciting thing for folks who know about Atmos to see it in this near field environment with the quality that it has. So if you haven't gotten a chance to listen to it, you should come on board and do that. But I'm gonna invite Jeff to come up I'm gonna to try to deal with some of that sound that's creeping in. And then uh, we're gonna have the opportunity to meet uh, Dr. Dennis Farris, who is the CEO and the founder of uh, Battleborn Batteries. So here's Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Jeff Sobel. I'm the Chief Engineer Creative Technology Officer for the John London Educational Tour Bus. And just as a way of adding, providing some context before Dennis comes up, I wanted to talk about what some of the significant pain points were with our previous outdated lead acid battery system. Um, for many years, the bus uh, ran a lead acid battery system that's in conjunction with the onboard generator that we have. Um, and um, well, I should tell you that as, in addition to doing the system design and integration of the audio, video, and, and power systems, I also train the crew. And one of the things uh, that we spent a lot of time training crew on is, was how to manage the power system. Because the battery system that we used to have, 16 extremely heavy, thousands of pounds of lead acid batteries on board, would only last a few hours powering everything on board the, the bus audio, video, and climate control. Um, so our, our engineers, as they're wearing many, many hats to lead a group of students through a songwriting project where, where kids are creating original song, recording it, and shooting a music video for it all in one day, our engineers would also have to be managing the power system and always keeping like one part of their brain tuned to the battery system, how much charge was left, when they needed to run the generator in order to recharge those batteries. Um, 16 lead acid batteries would give us a couple of hours of runtime, like I said, so we would have to um, think very judiciously about how we were going to use that time so that uh, when it came to recording vocals and uh, 
other acoustic instruments. We could run silently on the batteries um, using the very little time that we had available on batteries to do that before we would have to turn the very loud, noisy diesel generator back on to regenerate power. Thankfully, all those worries are now gone and our engineers can focus on what matters, which is creating music and working with kids to teach them how to do that. The new battery system from Battleborn Batteries, same number of batteries, thousands of pounds less in weight, and all day run time. So now they don't have to think about it. They start the day fully charged up and can run all day um, using these, this new battery system that takes the same amount of space, but like I said, far less weight, which is very important in a bus because weight equals uh, you know, a loss of fuel economy. Uh, so by losing all of this weight on these lithium ion, ion batteries, um, the bus is more efficient, it's greener, um, and they're able to run quietly all day long. Um, so this is an incredible upgrade for us that we're very, very pleased about. It's not just technology, it's, it's helping with creative workflow as well in, in, in so many ways. Um, so to really kind of talk more about the details of this um, and the technology behind it, I want to introduce Dennis Ferris um, from Dragonfly Energy. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Brian. Uh, it's always great to have the opportunity to talk about what we do at Dragonfly Energy. I, uh, I've been doing this for, for quite some time now. I actually, my background is from academia. I was actually a, an engineering professor for a while at, at USC. So if anyone has a question, raise your hands and I'll call on you and, you know, so we can keep this very, uh, very educational. Um, the mission behind Dragonfly Energy has to do with the incorporation of more renewable energy uh, onto the grid. So if you consider getting your electrons from the sun or from the wind, the problem we have with those sources is that they're intermittent. The sun goes down at night, clouds go by, the wind comes and goes. So the whole point of an energy storage system is to be the buffer, to actually collect the energy when you're making it and then deliver it when you need it. And the cost of solar power has come down so much that it's actually cheaper to make electrons from solar than it is from burning fossil fuels. But the reason that it's not really turned over as significantly as it should have is because of the cost of the batteries. So it's all about the batteries. The batteries are the bottleneck to renewable energy now. This is an example where you're already cost effective. We can already do a better job than lead acid batteries can to ensure that you have enough power to power the entire, to the, the entire rig. So as technology becomes more and more advanced and computing becomes more and more intense, we keep using more and more power. So we need to be able to deliver more and more power. So that's sort of the background of Dragonfly Energy. And ultimately, lithium ion batteries have become better and better and better, but not because of these applications. It's because of these applications and electric vehicles now. And the important thing for these applications and electric vehicles is not necessarily the ability to store, but they have to be extremely lightweight. They need to charge really fast. And if they last a few hundred, maybe a thousand cycles, then you're that's okay. When you think about a storage battery, you want them to be relatively inexpensive up front, relatively light, because you don't want them to add weight, a lot of weight to your axles. But more importantly, you need them to last a very long time. You want them to be able to cycle 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 cycles, because the cost of the storage is basically that initial cost amortized over the life of the battery. So this is what we've been focused on at Dragonfly Energy. And of course, it's really difficult to get people to catch on to that notion, because people think of lithium ion batteries in terms of power tools and cell phones. So our initial go-to-market strategy was to demonstrate the efficiency and the cost effectiveness in basically motorhomes. You're powering appliances. You can charge the batteries when you're driving down the road. You can charge the batteries if you've got solar on the roof. You can charge the batteries if you're plugged into shore. So we started making lithium-ion batteries 
We call them Battleborn batteries because we make them in the, the Battleborn state of Nevada. Um, and we started demonstrating for people that if you replace the lead acid batteries on your RV, your motorhome, your trailer, with a lithium ion battery alternative, all of a sudden you can power all those appliances that you couldn't when you have lead acid batteries. Microwave ovens, induction cooktops, hair dryers, coffee makers, without having to start your generator, without having to plug into shore power. That's the important part of this, is that now you can go out off-grid. If you got solar on your roof, you can match the amount of solar energy that you make with the amount of power that you, that you use and use the, the batteries to basically puffer, buffer you throughout the entire day and night. And that is the point. And this is what we're trying to achieve here. So on, on the John Lennon bus right here, we have, um, we have 16 of, we built uh, these batteries in the shape of an 8D battery footprint, which is a con conventional size for a lead acid battery. So we've got 16 8Ds, but each one of those batteries is a 12 volt battery with 270 amp hours. So you get a lot more power when you compare it to a lead acid battery in that same footprint. Um, but more importantly, a lead acid battery will die after a few hundred cycles. These will last three to 5,000 cycles. So basically, it'll outlast the bus. So that's the, the, when you consider about the cost of the storage, you've got to consider the longevity in addition to the upfront cost. So a little background about what these batteries are made of. There's a lot of different types of lithium ion batteries. The batteries in your cell phone, in your laptop, in your power tools, they have a specific type of cathode made of cobalt, cobalt oxide cathode. The batteries in your EVs are a little different. They've got some nickel, manganese, and cobalt in them. Um, and those are very, very energy dense. They're also a little toxic. They're also pretty flammable. Um, they're also not suitable for a 12 volt application. Each of these batteries are 12 volts, which means you can charge them from the alternator, you can charge them from a conventional source you might use to charge your lead acid batteries. These are made of lithium and phosphorus. They're lithium iron phosphate batteries. And it's a very unique chemistry of lithium ion battery. It was invented in the 1990s by the inventor of lithium ion batteries whose name is Dr. John Goodenough, uh, and he actually won the Nobel Prize in chemistry for that invention. Um, sadly died this past year at about 102 years old, something like that. So, um, but lithium iron phosphate <coughs> is particularly interesting for these types of applications because it also has a very, very low flammability. So when you're considering a storage system to back up your solar system, you consider longevity and you consider safety and you consider the ability to power your DC devices to charge with your DC chargers. And if you look at what's on the market, everything is focused on 12, 24, 48 volts. And that's why these are so effective at basically coming in and replacing what you got. So um, we were very, very successful at driving that message in the RV space. Our customers invented the word glamping. You can go off grid, you can power whatever appliances that you want in some beautiful place that's not, on, that's not plugged in anywhere. And that really was uh, what really drove this industry. And during COVID, a lot of things shut down, but what didn't shut down was RVing. RVing pretty much kind of exploded over that time period. So obviously a very fruitful period of growth for us as a company. Um, but at, eventually the manufacturers began to catch on. So now if you buy an Airstream, if you buy a Tiffin, if you buy a Keystone, if you buy a Forest River, it will have our batteries on it. And you can generally power all of the appliance on those rigs 
when you're not plugged into Shore. So that's, that's pretty significant. So this is, this is sort of an extension of that application. But I want to take it a little bit longer term now as well, because what this bus represents is sustainability in that you've got 2.4 kilowatts of solar on the roof. So let's say you get five hours of peak daylight. So you're creating 2.4 kilowatt hours every hour. So around 12 kilowatt hours you're producing from the sun every day. If you can power, if you, if you have uh, a session that you know, that you can determine how much power all of, your, all of your devices use and you basically sum that up over the entire 24 hour period, if you're below that 12, 13 kilowatt hours, that means you never have to turn anything on. You never have to start the bus, you never have to plug in. You're living off of the sun. This is exactly the point that we're trying to drive. Because if you take this microcosm and put it on the entire power grid that's powered by solar and wind, then the amount of power that we all use in our residential homes or our businesses can be tuned to how much sun and wind is produced. And it's surprisingly not a lot of solar and wind installations that are required to power everything that we use in terms of electricity. But you need the batteries. So you got to tune the batteries to be able to be that buffer. And that is the future of the power grid. The future of the power grid is this expanded to be able to basically follow the same principles. This is becoming increasingly more important now because the first thing as a society that we've electrified is transportation. Electric vehicles are very popular these days. They're great. They have uh, fantastic properties and acceleration and everybody loves their tel Teslas. Ultimately, all of that energy that used to be created from burning fossil fuels in the car, from burning the gas, from those internal combustion energies, is now coming from the grid. And this was a stress that we never had before. So it is more important now than ever that this model be proliferated everywhere because we're using more and more power from the grid. And so this is the the importance of lithium ion batteries and lithium ion battery technology now can't be overstated. We need more storage. Lithium is particularly good at providing storage everywhere. You can get lithium battery systems for your home. You can get them in every building and every business. And the important thing is to make sure that if this is implemented, it's cost effective and it's safe. And I can guarantee you, it's going to be beneficial for every utility company to go solar, wind, and batteries because they will make more money with that model. And ultimately, that's when everything is going to change over. This isn't, this isn't unknown. Um, there's been a lot of talk of how do we make more lithium-ion batteries here. And 95% of the lithium-ion batteries come from overseas. There is one active lithium mine in the United States. It's in Nevada, Silver Peak, and it doesn't make batteries. So there's a very strong push now to increase the infrastructure in this country domestically and in Europe and in Canada to get the lithium out of the mines, to process the lithium into, into battery materials and to actually make the batteries here. So this is a issue of self-reliance. It's an, also an issue of globalization and making sure everybody on the globe has access to clean, renewable energy and that it's cost effective for everybody. So I just wanted to put that into context. This, obviously, it's such an honor to be part of a project like this for Dragonfly, for, for our company. Um, but the fact that it is so relevant to what's happening now in terms of sustainability, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of 
being able to make energy that we desperately require and do it in a clean fashion and do it in a sustainable fashion. Um, so our ability to demonstrate it again with another project um, makes it that much sweeter. And to have the Battleborn logo next to the self-sketch of John Lennon is just incredible for me to see. So thank you, Brian, for, for that opportunity.